Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. Today, we are getting a backstage tour of Mediterra Bakehouse. So we're here at their baking facility, and we're going to get a tour from Anthony Ampliotis. What is your position here, Anthony? I am a co-owner, and I'm the uh, production manager here at the bakery. So let's see how you make all this bread. This is like where the magic happens. This is it. Let's go. I'll show you. And so also, I want to note that this is like your 20th anniversary. Yeah, so this bakery we built 20 years ago, and we just celebrated our 20th uh, anniversary this year. So come on in. So this is what we would consider like the heartbeat of the bakery here. So this oven was built by a fourth generation master oven builder from Austria, and it's got 30,000 pounds of bricks, and uh, it's a steam injected, no moving parts, and uh, it's, it's, it's a beast. This is like our Cadillac, this oven. It's 20 years in, out, every day, every deck, all day, every day, and it's, it's been good to us. And what's going in there right now? So this is a rosemary olive oil loaf. You'll see they're going to dust them with some flour, and uh, they're going to put them on this conveyor loader. He'll put them in. He'll score each loaf. He'll steam each deck and everything that goes in on there but comes out on the peel. Wait, does it, wait, does it come out on this side also? Yeah, so he'll put it in here and uh, he'll, he'll pull out manually using the, the oven peel. Yeah, so we'll come back, we'll circle back here and he'll be pulling stuff out by that point. Okay, so come on over here. This is where all the shaping happens. So over the course of 20 years that we've been in business, we've had to make some drastic changes to meet up with demand and keep quality and consistency, uh, you know, consistent, basically. So at the beginning of COVID, actually, we ordered this machine before COVID, and this machine came here uh, right at the start of COVID, which was kind of a bummer. But I, or my brother Nick here, say hi, Nick. We, that's your brother? That's my brother, Nick. That's my younger brother. Yeah, it's all family here. Brothers, wives, adopted brothers, people that are not family but kind of like family. Uh, we used to stand at that bench over there, and for 12 or 14 hours a day, all we would do would be dump dough on the table and hand cut it with a bench knife and throw it to guys, and they would shape it like they are here. But as we grew, it just wasn't sustainable to do it this way. So... I have some, uh, some big baking friends and some, some people in high places in the baking world that really know what, how to grow bakeries. So I asked them, what can we do to grow this bakery without sacrificing any quality, without changing any of our doughs? And they pointed us to this machine. So this is called a Rion. This is a Japanese machine that is state-of-the-art. As you can see, it's stress-free. That's not always the case. <laughs> but stress-free meaning it's stress-free for the dough. You can use um, very wet, Nick, you can, you can use very wet, you can use very wet, highly hydrated doughs, and the machine can do it. So what, basically the way this works, you see the dough here, it's oh my gosh, John, we got, you got to look at these giant tubs full of dough. This is nuts. So, like I said, we used to pour these on the table, and I used to hand cut them. Now what we're able to do is you dump them up here in this hopper, okay? And you can see down here, it she very gently sheets the dough out, keeping all the air, all the gases, everything you worked so hard during fermentation to gain. It keeps all that in there. And these are scales, okay? So we have it set here. 570 grams, 18 pieces per minute. And when it's at, you know, 570 grams, it'll cut it and it'll come through. And then still the art is not lost because these guys are all still hand shaping. Okay, so uh, some people might say, well, you're taking away from what's artisan. Well, look around. They're hand shaping. It's going in French linen, okay, and... One hand may touch each loaf seven or eight times before it's even baked, okay? So this was just a way for us to continue to grow without sacrificing any quality. And then after about a year, Boaz, the machine is so great, we got a second one, okay? So now we have two lines that we can run simultaneously, 
And again, same machine, just two of them now. So you must be making things so much faster. I mean, you're, I mean, it must be so much easier. Yeah, well, what has happened is you're able to increase your output. I, this is the third time I've said it. You're not able to, you don't sacrifice any quality. We haven't had to change any formulas. Um, and you're able to do more with less, but we haven't laid anybody off. The people that uh, maybe people are, are able to do things that they weren't able to do before, whether it's bake or learn how to mix. Yeah. So speaking of mix, let's go over there. And so I'm just curious, like in one of these huge tubs of dough, like how many loaves of bread is in a, a big tub of dough like that? So in a, in a tub like that, like the ones over there that we were dumping, it's about 150 loaves at 570 grams. Wow. Yeah. That's just like bonkers to fathom so much bread. And, you know, on a day like today, we're going to use, we're going to make about 15,000 uh, loaves today. Yeah. Wow. And that's a standard day. That's a standard day. This is, uh, you can see the mixers here. This is a starter that, this is a sourdough starter that he's going to use to make bread tomorrow. So that'll sit overnight and that'll get used tomorrow. But going back to what I was saying, we started from such humble roots here. When I was a boy and I, was, I would come here and work uh, for my father, there would be days, most days, we would use, you know, a couple hundred pounds of flour total. Now we're using upwards of 15,000 pounds of flour a day. So, again, as we've grown, we've had to do things to make things easier and more consistent. And so one of the things we've done here on the mix station for the flour is get a silo here. Oh, my gosh. This is like... Bonkers. What, like how much flour is in that? Well, there's your reader right there. Right now it's 54,000 pounds of flour. This was filled this morning. This gets filled once a week. We have five production, or sorry, six production days a week. And this gets filled once a week. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're using 12 to 15,000 pounds of flour a day. So that's a lot of flour. That's a lot of bags, okay? How did the guys do that before with so many bags it hurts your back you limit who can do this job so now what we were able to do with this silo is they come over here they uh <laughs> excuse me they're able to type in okay this mix the air is thick with flour here yeah. it's wild yeah, it's in my lungs man uh they'll come over here they'll type 250 pounds you know it'll come over here and they're able to put it directly into their mixers just like a, a flour vacuum that's that exactly, sucks it out. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. It's a vacuum that puts it in there, and then there's a valve that they're able to put it either into mixers or into buckets and, you know, make bread out of it. So here on the mix station is where really all the science behind baking happens. This is probably the most important step. Every step's important, but precision and accuracy pH, meet, uh, you know, pH levels for your sourdoughs. This is where all the science happens, okay? So, uh, like I said earlier, they're mixing starters. We use six different type of starters, four of them being sourdough, that basically power our bread for the following day. And each one has a different function. We use some that are all rye, some that are all whole wheat, some that are a mix with different varying levels of acidity, to uh, whether we want to have something that's a little bit more acidic, something that wants to showcase the flavor of the grain, we're able to do that with from the toolbox we, we create here. Wow. And I know with the flour here that you, you started growing your own grain also. Yeah. So in Arizona, we, uh, we have another bakery in Arizona. And my father is very uh, uh, a visionary. About 10 years ago, he said, I would like to organically grow grains of our own, okay, that we can mill in-house, okay, so that we can control the entire process far, from seed to loaf, okay, from farm, farming, milling, and baking. It's all done under the Mediterra name. So with that, we're able to control everything, make sure things are not chemically sprayed or grown in the right conditions, grown with the right specs that we want. And that has uh, 
really taken our bread to the next level, not only in terms of uh, flavor, but health-wise too, because we're trying to get at least 10% whole grain and all of our loaves of bread, okay? And that's our goal within the next five years is for every single loaf, not just to have whole grain, because whole grain's great, but fresh, milled, organically grown whole grain, that's the kicker. And come on, I'll show you that. So about a year and a half ago, as we've grown. Uh, this looks good. What are we passing right well, this now? Is, this is focaccia here. Yeah, it's a good, a lot of olive oil in there. Yeah, needs a shout out at the very least. Oh wow, this is like, in a, we're in a, in a forest of racks. Okay, so they're doing some cleaning here. I don't know why they have my mill covered, but this is a stone mill here that is handmade in Vermont. Uh, and with this mill, we're able to take this grain, okay? And is this, is this the grain that you're growing this in Arizona? Is, this is the grain we're growing. So this grain here is called Bluebeard Durham. Okay, this is a very special grain. We actually grow about six different varietals. Okay, this is Bluebeard Durham. You got to see this one because it's really, really cool. Oh my gosh, this one looks so different than the other one. This is called Purple Barley. This is native of Tibet. Okay, and this, the flavor profile of this is crazy. We just got this in, so we're experimenting and we're going to do a lot of cool things with this via bread and certain things at the cafe also. So as we mill, you know, you take the whole grain and we're not sifting anything out, okay? We're using the whole grain. And so the coolest thing is you go, if you do it right, you go from that to that and you're not losing any nutritional value. It's all there, it's 100% whole wheat, whole grain, and uh, this, is the, this is the healthiest way to eat bread. This is the right way to eat bread, in, in our opinion. Yeah, a little different than Wonder Bread, maybe. Uh, yeah, most, most, of our, most of our bread has you know, three ingredients, flour, water, salt. And so now you have to like somehow figure out a way to harvest your own salt. You have to like buy a boat, go out to the ocean, be like, you know. Maybe we're already on that. Yeah. I don't know. Remember I said my dad's the visionary and we're from, uh, you know, his family's from Greece. So maybe you're onto something yeah. there. So call up some cousins, Greek cousins. Yeah. So then as we've continued to grow, okay, as I said, we needed a piece of equipment to make the dividing and shaping part of the uh, production a little bit, facilitated a little bit. The oven part's the next thing. So come on over here. I talked to those same buddies I said earlier and said, what's the best oven in the world I can get for making artisan bread and, again, quality higher than what we're doing now? And we got this oven. This is a uh, corn file. It's a Czech, made in the Czech Republic, and there's only about 10 of these in the United States right now. It's a thermal oil oven, meaning it's powered by hot oil, okay? I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, it's a new thing. That's why I said there's only a few of them in the United States. And what that does for you, bread likes a very consistent bake. It doesn't like temperatures going up and down, up and down. And with this, you get that because oil is such a great conductor of heat. Um, so it bakes the same from front to back, side to side, and it makes baking a little easier. So now you can have anybody do it. You don't have to be some big, burly, strong man to bake. Uh, you know, we have, you know, petite girls from Mexico that bake here now because... You can do that with this oven. So that's what this oven has allowed us to do. And what are we? What bread are we seeing coming in and out right now? This right here, John. This is this is uh, panabello. So this is like our rustic Italian bread. And you can see by looking at before on the other ovens, you'd be able to tell who baked. Okay, because some guys baked, maybe not rightfully so, but some guys baked a little darker. Some guys baked a little lighter. Some guys didn't move as quick. So the colors were all over the map. Now you can see here, they're all the same. They're all the same. So what this has done for us consistency-wise has been amazing. It's been amazing. And then this is uh, 
a traditional marble rye getting loaded into the oven right now. And working with your family, you know, we saw your brother you talking to your dad. Like, it feels like that must be cool, but it feels like it must have its challenges also. Well, yeah, it, it took a long time to really get where we're at today for everybody to really settle into their position. Uh, I'm the second of the brother, so my older brother was here first, okay? And he has a niche nobody can do, okay? But I think I do, and I think my younger brother Nick does, and I think my sister Nicole does. It just took a long time to kind of settle into our roles. I don't know if I should say this or not, but there were times me and my brother basically fist fought on the production floor, okay? Because I knew I was better at doing that job than he was. And like I said, there's jobs that he does that I wouldn't even dream of doing because I know he's so good at it. So... Uh, about four years ago, we took all this space you're seeing over here, and this is the, the freezing area. So we are, we are in um, some accounts uh, from New Jersey down to Florida over to Kentucky, and so we needed a lot of freezer space. You can peek in here and see you know, the amount of pallets of bread we have. And we ship out three to four truckloads of bread per week. So this is constantly turning over three or four times a week. And uh, this is where the packing's done. And how far is the farthest of your bread going? Well, we have a bakery here and a bakery in Arizona, but from here I would say South Florida. Yeah. South Florida. I, I, going to Greece yet? Yeah, John's asking if anything's going to Greece. Not yet, but cool story on that. When my dad decided to start this bakery over 20 years ago, he had been in food like all of us have our entire lives. This is, this is all we know. This is all we want to know. Okay. I think if all you know is food, that's a cool thing to yeah. only know. Right. So, uh, he needed to study how to make bread. Okay. He was a, he was a food importer for many years. He owned a, uh, he took over his father's grocery store, you know, 40 some years ago, turned that into a specialty food store. Then he became a food importer and he always wanted to manufacture something. So he, uh, being in food, he chose bread. And so he went all over the country, studied in all different bakeries all over the United States. But he also, and I think it shows in a lot of our bread, he went to his mother's village on the island of Chios in Greece and studied at the community bakery there. Okay, so there's a lot of old world and what we do, even if you see all these like fancy machines and uh, at, our, at our core, we are very, very old world and old school and th that's, that will never change. Yeah. yeah, so continue to come with me over here. Like I said, this is the packing area. Hola. Oh, we got pastries. Okay, this is, we're getting to my favorite part now. This is where all the pastry happens over here. Now, if you go to, like, your cafes in Stewickley, are you, are, you, are you making the pastries here for that, or are they making pastries there? Well, it's a little bit of both. They do some stuff there. We do the bulk of it here because this serves as kind of the commissary for the cafe in terms of pastry and bread. Uh, there are some things they do there, but... This is, the, this is the hub for that, so come on in here. Hey, Musica. So this is, the, uh, this is the pastry department in here, and this is where you know, all the, the scones and the lamination of, of croissants and Danish, is, it's all done here. And the same philosophies we carry at, in the bread part, in the bread production, in the cafes, uh, it's all the same here. We use the, the best ingredients. We don't just a giant tray of butter, a giant rack of butter. These are these are giant racks of butter, yeah, and these are weighed out and scaled for croissants, for the lamination of croissants, which is, you know, when you take the dough and the butter and you sheet it and you have different layers of dough butter, dough butter, dough butter. So they're getting ready to do some lamination for the day. Yeah. It's wow, it's just wild to see like so much of an ingredient. It's just like in my kitchen, I'm like, well, I'm used to seeing four sticks of butter, but yeah. just a giant rack of butter is impressive. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of butter. You might yeah. want to watch your cholesterol. <laughs> so what it looks like, are there scones being cut over there? Uh, yes, they're cutting scones right now. What kind of scones are those? 
Cinnamon scones. Yeah. So they're they're making things back there for the for the cafes and they're cutting scones and they got some cake pops happening, I cake, think. That's a little cake pop pop action back there. Yeah, so a lot of fun stuff. Looks like she's probably making some little mini cakes over here. And do you have a favorite product that sort of like is your guilty pleasure? I mean, it's not a guilty pleasure, obviously. Yeah. It's a just a pleasure. You know, I think you can really judge a bakery with the most simple of things. Okay, so talking about pastry, for me, judge us off our butter croissant. Yeah. Okay, because there's no, no sugar added. There's not a ton of sugar. You know, there's not all these different flavors it's not like you know red velvet or cinnamon you know you're tasting the baker's work when you eat a butter croissant so you're tasting the fermentation of the dough you're tasting the skill of the laminator by the texture and the mouthfeel and how light and airy it is so for me i would say the butter croissant now when we're talking bread i would say our red fife levan bread is probably uh what I would say, judge us off that, okay? Because that has the highest proportion of the fresh milled grain. That, like I said, we're growing, we're milling it. It gets used the same day it's milled. That's why the mill wasn't going because the mixers mill overnight, okay? And they use that mill, they use that grain that day. We only mill what we need because using it fresh is kind of key here. Uh, that bread's naturally fermented. It's got a high hydration, so Butter croissant, red fife levan for me. That's it. <laughs> but if you want to get crazy, I think the the cruffins are really good too. Yeah, totally. So come on. And then you can see these. The baking, you know, starts now, and the baking will go throughout the whole night until you know the drivers come in and start delivering, you know, overnight. Wow, so is someone here 24 hours a day doing something? Yeah, there's always somebody here. And our, um, our entire production day, I would say, is about 27 hours from start to finish. So the first person will come in at, you know, 8 or 9 at night, and the last baker will leave at, in the middle of the night the following day. Wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a long, long day, but... Uh, we do things the right way and we don't cut it. We don't take any shortcuts. That's what we try to do to make things special. Totally. Gosh, well, Anthony, thank you so much for this tour. Do we have one more stop? Well, this is just the, uh, the packing department here. And, you know, this is where you can see, you know, the slicing takes place and packaging happens. But yeah, that's about, that's about the end of our tour. Well, thank you so much. Congrats on your 20th anniversary. And I know you started here with 4,000 square feet. Now you're up to 40,000. That's right. Yeah. So I'm excited to visit another 20 years. This year, you're where 400,000 square foot <laughs> kitchen and see like what other, you know, crazy baking technology they've invented. But thank you so much. Thank and now you. hopefully every time, whenever someone enjoys some Mediterranean or bread or pastry, they'll think back to, to this, to this incredible facility where you're making it happen. Thank you, Boaz. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Pittsburgh, for 20 years. Without you guys, couldn't happen.